Hello friends, this is Jim here with Science Talk, and I uh, want to discuss with you this uh, article that appeared on the online publication EOS. That was published on the 17th of June of 2022, and the headline is as follows. Without deep emission cuts, marine species face mass extinction. Okay, well, there's a picture of a nice, nice picture of an Arctic cod, kind of a young one, but there it is. You can barely make out the, the dorsal fins there, but uh, Arctic cod, uh, Sean Harper, University of Alaska Fairbanks, made the photo. Yeah. Recent research has found that under a quote unquote business as usual emission scenario, Marine ecosystems are likely to experience mass extinctions on par with past great extinctions. For example, the Permian. The reason? Ocean warming and depleted levels of dissolved oxygen. How many times have you heard me say that warming oceans decreases gas solubility and that's going to negatively impact organisms. Oh, there it is being said right there. Now the question, you know, we all know organisms need the oxygen. Okay. The question then becomes how much oxygen is enough? What's the minimal amount that a given organism needs to survive? And that's a statement by Curtis Deutsch who's a co-author of an article that was published in Science recently. Deutsch and his co-author, Justin Penn, are researchers of both the Department of Geosciences at Princeton University and the School of Oceanography at the University of Washington. Penn and Deutsch use existing data to better understand how, how much oxygen marine species need relative to how much is available at different activity and temperature levels. Using such data, they built a mathematical model to predict thermal limits and their impact on species. So they, so they sought to answer questions such as, would a given species be able to survive at minimal activity in a resting state? Would it be able to be active enough to sustain and reproduce would it be able to survive in a state of maximum exertion? As the temperature goes up, the ocean has less oxygen, but marine species need more oxygen. Okay, let's, let's explain uh, that statement right there. Yes, we know that increase the temperature, gas solubility decreases. Why do species need more oxygen? Because most species are poikilotherms. That is, their body temperature changes with the ambient temperature. So as you increase the water temperature, you are increasing their metabolic rate. But if you're increasing their metabolic rate, they need more oxygen to run the increase metabolic rate. That's what's going on. They need more oxygen to sustain the increased metabolism. So it's a double whammy. There's less oxygen in the warming water, and they need more of it to sustain the increased metabolism. So it's, it's a double whammy and that's impacting them negatively. So they looked at the, uh, the IPCC's uh, sixth assessment report, you know, to get some of the data. Under a low emission scenario in which the temperature stops rising at about 1.9 C of warming by the end of the century. Excuse me for a moment. <coughs> Ain't happening. We know it's going to blow right past that. Their model predicted species losses consistent with levels we see today. 
Hmm. Under a high emission scenario in which warming could reach around 4.9 degrees C, excuse me again, <coughs> that's the low end, losses are markedly elevated. They noted that polar species are most at risk. Polar species have the highest sensitivity to temperature and oxygen relative to the tropics because species in the tropics have already adapted to life in regions with higher temperatures and lower levels of oxygen. That much is, cr is correct. And if you start warming up the polar waters there, the oxygen levels will drop and it's, uh, and it'll be very bad for polar uh, species. You know, example, you know, look at say some freshwater uh, fish species. You've got something like a catfish you know, say in the Mississippi River or what have you. Warm waters, they're adapted to low oxygen levels. Go to a northern New England stream somewhere in New Hampshire or Maine. You got cold uh, stream water there. Well, they have high oxygen levels, so you're going to find a lot of nice trout. Now, you take that trout from a stream in Maine and you put it in that river in uh, Mississippi, uh, that trout will be dead <laughs> because there's simply not enough oxygen for it. So uh, the authors compared the current period of global warming and loss of ox ocean oxygen to marine extinctions uh, during the great dying event at the end of the Permian that occurred about 250 million years ago was the most severe extinction event in Earth's history. Overall, there's something like 95 to 99% of all uh, taxa uh, disappeared. So it was an extreme event. As someone who studies uh, past extinctions, it's easy to think about the magnitude and intensity of extinction events. But imagining this in our current time, how potentially damaging it could be, is difficult. This is why the paper and its projections are important and sobering. Uh, said uh, Pedro Manuel Monares, who is a postdoc fellow at the Department of Geological Sciences at Stanford University. He was not involved in this paper, in this research. Policymakers really need to start looking at these comparisons between oxygen levels, temperature, and species needs, because it's not hyperbole to say that the modern crisis is going to be a big extinction event. Extinction intensity has rarely been as severe on land as it been in the ocean, but marine ecosystems are often overlooked in such studies. From what we've seen in the extinction mechanism and the fossil record in the oceans, the main factors are oxygen depletion and warming. And usually what goes with that is acidification. Let's be clear on that. And another thing that goes with those is decrease in net primary productivity. Most conservation efforts focus on threshold species because that's easier to see. However, we do know from terrestrial studies that if you remove one species from an ecosystem or introduce one, you can get all kinds of unpredictable changes. Extinctions and even smaller reductions in ocean biomass as a real result of net decrease product, primary productivity and, sec and secondary productivity have consequences far beyond marine ecosystems. Marine resources are an important part of the global human diet, so not only extinction, but losing abundance of marine species would also have huge impact on people's ability to feed themselves. That's a reference to the fact that many people around the planet rely on ocean resources for their protein. In May, for instance, the biggest producer of king salmon in New Zealand shut down three farms because of fish die-offs related to ocean warming. New Zealand King Salmon Chief Executive Officer Grant Rosewarn told Radio New Zealand that we're a bit like the canary in the coal mine when it comes to global warming. We've got a cold water species that's very susceptible to half a degree change or one degree change. We're very much hoping to work with the government for them to mitigate climate change they have committed to do. Mitigation is still possible, according to Penn and Deutsch, because extinction risk depends on greenhouse gas emission. It means it's still time to change 
the trajectory of future emission. So this is the silver lining. Um, thermal inertia, lag effect, all the feedback, positive feedback loops have been kicked into place. Um, that's a wee bit of smoking hopium weed. Please share. Uh, I do not think it's re a realistic uh, a statement there. So to kind of pull this together a wee bit. Warming up the oceans. Okay. Oxygen levels decrease. You also do what? You stratify the oceans. Now you can't mix in the nutrients. Primary productivity drops off, which means secondary productivity drops off. So now, so not only are the fish experiencing, or, or any organism, but you know the warmer water increases the metabolism, so they need more oxygen, but then they need more food, and then their food sources are disappearing because productivity is reducing, and therefore the food is not available. So what, how, what can they do to uh, counter? Uh, they could migrate to higher latitudes or migrate vertically in the water column, go to a place where the temperature is to their liking. But the big question is, will they find their food? But what if you're a polar species already? Migrate to higher latitude. Where are you going to go? You're already at a pretty high latitude. And you still have the same situation. Will you encounter your required food? So um, we're seeing pl being played out here. A lot of the same factors that have caused other uh, mass extinctions in the past. They, they uh, noted the Permian here, but there were other mass extinctions where pretty much it was increased CO2 levels that increase the, you know, acidify the oceans, reduce the oxygen, reduce primary productivity, and you had mass die-offs. We're seeing that now. In fact, basically, if you were to, you know, list the four major factors that can that factor in or control or result in uh, oceanic extinctions. It's war ocean. It's uh, warming of the oceans, increased CO two, which is increases the acidification. It's decreased oxygen, decreased productivity. Those four factors alone and or working in conjunction with the others brings about marine extinctions. And we are seeing increased areas of ocean, uh, oceanic, either hypoxic regions or anoxic regions. Hypoxic is reduced oxygen levels, anoxic is just no oxygen levels. And then you get you know, mass die-offs. We're seeing this. So it's, it, isn't, it isn't even just a simple deoxygenation or lowering of the oxygen content. It's that such, uh, such scenarios will lead to hypoxic or anoxic uh, regions. And as I said, we are seeing this taking place right now in the oceans. So when you've heard me say in the past, the oceans are dying, and I've cited the overfishing, the stratification, I've done what also? I've cited decreased oxygen levels, decreased productivity, increased temperatures, increased acidification. I wasn't talking out my ass, folks. And if the oceans, you know, if we see extinction in the ocean, we're going to see extinction on land because phytoplanktons provide 
55 to 80 percent of atmospheric oxygen. We're dependent on the phytoplankton. So with that, until next time.